Hello BookTube! Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and this is going to be my February wrap up. I keep saying that I'm going to check out less library books and read my own books, but I still found myself in the month of February with quite a few library books that I had held over from the previous weeks that I was needing to finish up. So earlier in the month I have filmed a few segments of books that I read in February so that I could go ahead and get those books returned. Uh, so if the background shifts a little bit that's because I may have filmed that segment a little earlier in the month. Now for February I had about 21 books on my TBR. I ended up getting everything off of my currently reading list except one book and that is Illuminae. This has been on my currently reading list since January and I just had to put it aside so that I could get some other stuff read. But I did pick this back up on February 29th later in the evening. However, I still had the majority of it left to read so I did not get very far on it but I will go ahead and finish this up before I start on my March Mystery Madness books from March. So this is what I'm currently reading. So I was able to complete 18 books for the month of February. Uh, quite a few of those were on audio but there were a few books I mentioned on my February TBR though that I did not get to and so let me tell you which ones of those I am still going to read at some point. I had said I was going to read Jane Eyre in February because our book club was reading it. I just didn't get to it. I really should have just ordered the audiobook and I could have probably gotten it done but I just couldn't get myself to start it. I had so many other things that I wanted to read and so I just had to lay this aside and I will get back to it. This is the one classic that I want to make sure I read this year. I also am supposed to read a classic that's less than 200 pages for the Around the World in 52 books and I picked Winnie the Pooh but I did not get to it yet so um, I will pick this back up probably in April. And then one other challenge for the Around the World in 52 books was to read a book that starts with the same letter your name starts with. Whenever I have a challenge like that with involving initials, I just usually try to go for something with my name. And so I picked this one, Elizabeth, Days of Loss and Hope. And then I started thinking, I'm probably not going to have time to read this. And so I started looking for something with my last name, and I thought I would read The Blue Hill Meadows by Cynthia Ryland. However, then I realized this book really doesn't fit the challenge. So I will get back to this or some other book that starts with E at some point in the year. I just had to put this on hold for now. And then the other set of books that I don't even think I mentioned on my February TBR because I think at that point I realized I wasn't going to get to them. Um, if you recall the video I did about seven collected authors that I've never read, I was originally planning to read Jody Thomas books in February. But my, so many other books just kind of pushed these out of the way and I didn't get to these. So I have postponed these for another month later on in the year. All right, so now what I did read. I have two children's books, five middle grade books, two YA books and then the rest are adult fiction. So I'll go in that order and I'll show you what I read. I read a few children's books in the month of February. This one I did go ahead and talk about on my February TBR because I thought I would already have returned it by now. So you can refer back to that video. Uh, but this is Hannah's Bookmobile Christmas by Sally Derby and it was a really sweet book. I also read Sagwa, the Chinese Siamese Cat. This was recommended to me by one of my Goodreads friends named Kayla and we were talking about books that feature cats and she had read this and really loved it and thought I would enjoy it and I did. It was really sweet. It's kind of a folktale type story. I don't know if it is an actual folktale about how Siamese cats got their coloring but it is written by Amy Tan and so you know whether she made up the story completely or is basing it off of a you know maybe it's a retelling of an old folk tale I don't know but it was a very cute story and the drawings and the artwork were really good and very vivid so there's some examples of that so I uh, enjoyed it a lot also in the month of February, I finished up the last two of this year's Florida Sunshine State Young Reader Award finalists. I read Nerd Camp 2.0 by Alyssa Brent Wiseman and I read The Hypnotists by Gordon Corman. Both of these books are, will be featured in a separate wrap-up video of the five fifth grade Sunshine State books that I read in January and February. And I'll link that down below. Then the other three middle grade books I read was the Half Upon a Time trilogy. These are by James Riley. I read Half Upon a Time, Twice Upon a Time, and Once Upon the End. 
I plan to do a full series review of these books uh, and that should be uploaded within the next uh, week or so. Now, I read these this month with a cost and so she will probably also uh, do a series review of this as well. So at whatever time that video comes up I will link that down below as well. And just to tell you briefly what these are about. These books are a really fun fairy tale mashup of so many different fairy tales and fairy tale characters. I mean, it just, the fun never stops and they're adorable. The main characters are really likable. You just really root for them. Jack is kind of an anti-hero and uh, it's just, they're just so cute. And I, I really, really thoroughly enjoyed them. And if you like uh, fractured fairy tales or books that are based on fairy tales, then this is a series I would definitely recommend. The, the sarcasm and the humor and the plot twists were just, just kept you going. It was a really fun and enjoyable experience to read these books. Then I read two YA fantasy books, one on audio and one in physical book. The audio book that I sped through at the beginning of February is Soundless by Rochelle Mead. Now I saw a lot of people getting this in their Owl Crate box a couple of months ago and then a few people started reading it and reviewing it um, last month. Uh, you know, and I heard several people say they were a little disappointed with it because it was plugged as a fantasy book and there's really not any fantasy elements until the ending. And that's all true. However, that didn't really diminish my enjoyment of the book. I really enjoyed the book. I thought it was very intense. There was a lot of um, drama and action and things in the book that I, I really enjoyed the process and the fact that the characters could not hear made, a, uh, made for a different story and a lot of different barriers and obstacles that you have to overcome. Like when you're rock climbing and you need to use your hands to speak, well, that presents a problem. <laughs> so, um, so that was interesting. And then the fact that some are losing their sight and can't hear, you know, that brings in other elements. So I thought this was a very good book. If you have any interest in reading it, I'd say go for it. I also read The Siren by Kiara Cass. And I really enjoyed it. I have done a separate review of this book and I will link that video down below. And then a book I checked out on Christmas Eve from the Bookmobile and did not get it read until February is The Christmas Joyride by Melody Carlson. I had not heard of Melody Carlson until I picked up this book and I really enjoyed it. I am looking forward to reading more of Melody Carlson's work. She has written a lot of Christmas themed books and uh, some other um, Amish books and uh, Christian books and things like that and I, I think I will definitely look into reading more of her stories. Now from the cover of this I thought this was going to be a humorous book and while it did have some uh, kind of heartwarming funny parts it was not really a funny book. It, it was really just very heartwarming and sweet and very enjoyable. I, I loved it. I thought it was great. It was about an 85 year old woman named Joy who has a website with Christmas recommendations and uh, it's a Christmas themed website and she ran a contest on her website that said she was going to be awarding the winners with a visit from Christmas Joy and and giving and bringing Christmas to them and she invited her website members to write in and nominate people who needed to have Christmas Joy come and visit them. At the point where the story starts, Joy has sold her house and packed up her years and years of Christmas decorations and Christmas ornaments and all of her Christmas things that she's collected over her, her entire life. She has chosen six winners of her contest and she has packed all of her Christmas things and divided them among the six winners. She's widowed, but she has owned an RV ever since her husband was living and it's been in storage. So she took it out of storage and had it gone over and tuned up and, and ready to go. And she has packed her RV to go from Chicago to Phoenix where her sons live and along the way travel on Route 66 and deliver all of her Christmas joy to the winners. And um, I believe the that was one of the factors in the contest was that the recipients needed to be along that route from Chicago to Phoenix. Her neighbor Miranda is invited to go along with her. Miranda is much younger than Joy. I think she's in her 30s, maybe late 20s, early 30s, and she is recently divorced and her house is getting foreclosed on in a couple of months. And so she's really not sure what she's going to do or where she's going to go, but she's been helping Joy with her website. But when Miranda finds out that Joy is planning to drive this motorhome 
all the way across country on her own she expresses doubt about whether joy is up to it and so joy says well miranda why don't you just go with me and you can help me drive and uh and you can help me spread christmas joy to all of my viewers so um so she does because the life that she had in chicago has just been turned upside down and she's not really sure what she's going to do at this point because her house is going to be foreclosed on and she doesn't really know where she's going to go so she decides to go with joy and then see what happens so it's just a wonderful story about their trip across country and the different people that they met and the the christmas cheer that they spread to these deserving people and uh, and there's uh, some drama along the way and some health issues and um, there is a little bit of insta love towards the end I would have to say it's kind of convenient but really it was an enjoyable read and um, and, and you you kind of want that to happen as you get to that part of the story you're like oh yeah come on you know it, it, you're just rooting for that to happen anyway so it's a very feel-good story a very good Christmas read I thoroughly enjoyed it and if you're not in the mood to read Christmas right now then I would say put this on your TBR for next Christmas because I think it's definitely worth picking up. I listened to quite a few audiobooks in the month of February and I think the first audiobook I listened to this month was Exit Wounds by J.A. Jantz. This is number 11 in the Joanna Brady series. I've talked about this series before. My husband and I have been listening to this over the last several months. Joanna Brady is the only female sheriff in Arizona and the county that she is the sheriff of borders Mexico. So there are issues with people crossing the border that they're trying to catch and different things like that throughout the series. Uh, but there is is a, a lot of good mystery stories throughout. The These are not cozy mysteries. These are pretty gritty and the crimes that are committed are, are gruesome. Joanna has to deal with a lot of really gruesome crimes and murders and um, all the while she is a parent. Uh, her daughter from her first marriage is a teenager, a young teen, or maybe a tween right now in this book, and she has recently married for the second time, and uh, and is now, according to this book, expecting a second child. So, uh, so there was some happy news in this book. I think J.A. Jantz does a really great job of not giving away who the criminal is until the very end. Sometimes you think you know who it's going to be, and then you realize you're uh, not even on the last disc, and you're like, wait a minute, it can't be this person, it can't be that easy, and so you know it's got to be somebody else, and uh, the, I think they're, they're very good, very, very enjoyable to listen to. I did have a problem with this particular audiobook. The narrator changed. This was a different narrator from the last several books. Now, the very first Joanna Brady book that we listened to was a different, was one narrator, and then after one or two books, it changed to a second narrator, which has done the majority of them and then this is the first book with this particular narrator. The problem I have is that Joanna's best friend has a very unusual last name and I've looked at it, I've, I'll spell it out for you on this video, I'll type it out so you can see what her last name is and see how you would pronounce it. <laughs> and so there seems to be a difference of opinion as to how this name is pronounced. Now I don't know how audiobooks are produced. I don't know if the authors are consulted. To me, it would seem a quick, easy fix to say to the author, hey, how is this name pronounced? How do you want it pronounced? And then from that point forward, all narrators should pronounce that name that way. Now, if a mistake is made with the first narrator, and you know the author hears it and says oh wait no that's not really how i wanted it done well, then they, the second narrator might be directed to do it the correct way however a third narrator should not pronounce a name a third different way than the other two that were pronounced i mean really by the third narrator this narrator has an obligation to the listener to just keep it the same even if she doesn't think that's how it should be pronounced really because it's so frustrating to the listener to hear a name pronounced three different ways over the series it's ridiculous i know i i have strong feelings about this but it was frustrating when the um second narrator changed it although i kind of like that better and and that's how it's been the majority of the time but by the time you get to a third narrator in the same series really nothing should be changed as far as how words are pronounced i, I just 
<laughs> that's just my opinion but uh but anyway i don't know i don't know do you have any opinion on that that was the only real beef i had with this was that every time that last name was pronounced i would cringe because it just wasn't the same as i was used to whether it's wrong or right it wasn't the same and i like a lot of humans have difficulty with change so there it is I read The Cat Who Saw Stars by Lillian Jackson Braun. This is the 21st or 22nd book in the series. My husband and I have been listening to these for quite a while now, and we have really been enjoying these. One thing I've never mentioned is the narrator for these books. It's George Waddell, and he is really, really good. He really does a good job of grasping the type of character that you think Quilleran would be. Now, I didn't think the mystery, the mystery in this particular story didn't grasp me as much as some of the previous ones, but I still did enjoy the dialogue and the banter between Quilleran and his friends, so I thought it was a very entertaining book, and if you have read and enjoyed any of the other Cat Who books, then I think you would enjoy this one. Now I had books three through five on cassette that I listened to in my car of the number one ladies detective agency series. I listened to Morality for Beautiful Girls, The Kalahari Typing School for Men, and The Full Cupboard of Life. Morality for Beautiful Girls was one that I had listened to before, and the neat thing about these books is the common sense and the cleverness of Mara Motswe, the main character, and then also her sidekick, Mama Kutsi, because they're very smart and just have a, an ability to think quick and think on their feet, and they're just fun books. These are really not murder mysteries. They're just fun stories where people need a private detective for whatever, you know, uh, to find out something or to help them get information or find out if their spouse is cheating or something like that. It's just very entertaining to see the way that Mara Motsue handles her cases. Another book that I listened to on audio was The Martian by Andy Weir. I did start this in January, but my husband listened to it first, and by the time I got it, it was about time for it to go back to the library, and other people were waiting on it, so I just barely got started on it. So I reordered it, and it came. I didn't know it was going to come that quickly. I really didn't plan on listening to it this month, but when it did, I decided I better go ahead and see what all the fuss was about. And I have to tell you, I was not a big fan of it like so many people are. Uh, for one thing... If you've watched my channel for any length of time, you know that I'm not a fan of foul language. And, you know, this audiobook assaults you with the F word twice in the first 12 words of the book. So, you can imagine that I would be a little put off with that. And and the other thing is just the immaturity of, of uh, Mark Watney. Now, I know that's his thing. He's just kind of a joker and you know he's super smart but yet he's a joker of course it wouldn't have been nearly as funny of a book in the eyes of most people and I'm assuming that that's why people thought it was funny because of the foul language and uh, you know just the, the stupid humor that was in it it kind of offset the very sciencey aspects of it now I did like the science aspect of it I enjoyed the survival story and everything that he did but the immaturity of Mark Watney I didn't enjoy I mean I can understand if you're you know, in such an intense situation, you need a little bit of humor to offset the intensity. But the old-fashioned mother slash school teacher in me still thinks that a person in this situation knows that they are going to be looked up to and basically be the subject of a certain amount of hero worship. I just wish he could have been a better role model. And I wish that this book was something that I could recommend to a young person without having that without them having to be assaulted by the F word every few pages. So now that's the old fashioned person in me coming out. Um, you know, and I was really surprised to see that there is actually an AR test on this book and it's rated a fifth grade level. There is no way I would let a fifth grader of mine read a book with this much foul language in it. I just wouldn't. I I was shocked. In the defense of AR, I suppose, on the listing, it does say profanity. It's, it does say, it gives you a warning. And, I, you know, I really wish that more books would do that. I wish they would let you know somewhere on this book that there's profanity, especially books for teens. Because as a parent, as much as I try to kind of read ahead and know what my kids are reading, I can't read everything that they're going to pick up. And uh, if I don't want them to be exposed to that in books, now they're going to get assaulted with bad language wherever they go. It doesn't mean they have to have it in their books. And I don't want to get off on that. That's a whole other thing. I can rant about that all day. <laughs> and, and I read some reviews and I discovered that I'm really not the only one 
who was not a huge fan of this book. Now, it wasn't specifically the bad language. It was just the immaturity and kind of the silliness of it. And the last two books for the month, I just finished up on February 29th. This one I listened to predominantly in my car. This is The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold. And I, again, I wasn't a fan of this either. I did think that the writing style was very beautiful. It's very lyrical, very haunting. But it's just not the kind of story that I really enjoy reading. And I understand that these kind of crimes happen. Um, but it's not the kind of thing that I enjoy reading. And plus, how the author portrayed heaven is so far away from my own personal belief system about heaven that I had a hard time getting around that and enjoying the story. So it, it, it really wasn't my kind of book. This book is actually going to be for my April book club. This is The Little Paris Bookshop by Nina George. I went ahead and listened to this in February because one of the challenges for the Around the World of 52 Books Challenge was to read a book about books. The setting of this story takes place primarily on a book barge, which is called the Literary Apothecary. And I thought that sounded really neat and really interesting. But I quickly lost interest because it really just kind of turned into a, a romance. And, and the main character lamenting about a lost love and not being able to move on from there and it just kind of haunting him. And it didn't click with me and I didn't enjoy it. You know, I was listening to it in the kitchen and sometimes I would zone out and realize that I would missed a little bit and I just didn't really care enough to go back and listen to what I had missed. I just didn't click with it. I'm not saying it's a bad book. A friend of mine recommended this for book club and she loved it and thought it was wonderful. So this may be a book for you. Uh, the narrator speaks in a French accent and I believe the book is translated from French. So you know you had to kind of really pay attention to understand what they were saying. I didn't enjoy it like I thought I would. So that's what I read in February. 18 books. Nine of them were on audio and two of them were children's picture books. So that leaves seven full-size physical books. So that's about right for one month, I guess. And uh, But if you add it all up, it comes to 18. Pretty good for one month. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.